In this tutorial, we're going to give an overview of network programming. Even though it's a pretty complex topic, we can still do some pretty amazing things with relatively little code. So the first thing that you need to understand is that all networked computers have an IP address. Now what this is is a unique identifier for your machine. It's typically in this form that you see here where we have four numbers that are separated by dots, and each number can range between 0 and 255. Because that's the case, we actually have 32 bits that make up an IP address, and that gives us about 4 billion possibilities. Now realize that this is an older protocol, it's IPv4, and they're actually moving to IPv6. And this will give us a much broader range of IP addresses. Another thing that you need to realize is for your computer to be able to communicate, it needs to have a network card. A lot of times these are called interfaces, and some examples might be your wireless card, or your Ethernet adapter, or even a VPN connection. For you Windows users out there, you can click your Start button, and right above that you'll see a text field where you can type in CMD and hit Return. And when you do that, it'll pull up the command line. Now if you notice, I typed in ipconfig, and when I do that, I get information about each interface on my machine. So for example, because my wireless adapter is connected, you can see that I have an IPv4 address of 192.168.0.104. Now this is a local IP address for my local network, but you can see that it still follows this format that we talked about. Another thing that you need to know is that when we make a connection with another machine, we have to specify a port. Now we have about 65,000 ports that we could connect to, but what this does is allows for multiple network connections at the same time. Another thing you need to remember is that the first 1,024 ports are reserved by the operating system. So I just listed a couple of common ports here. You can see port 21 is FTP, which is the file transfer protocol. Port 22 is secure shell. 23 is telnet. You have port 25 and 110 for sending and receiving mail. And perhaps the most famous is port 80, which is HTTP. Now it's also of interest that even though they're not really used that much, port 13 is the time protocol, and port 17 is the quote of the day. And again, you would rarely see these ports open on machines for security reasons. So if everything is based off of IP addresses, how can I translate something like www.google.com into an IP address? Well, that's actually the responsibility of the DNS, or Domain Name Service. Essentially what this is going to do is translate human-readable things into IP addresses. And as a user, you should be really thankful for this service. Think about having to memorize hundreds of IP addresses. This is also what a lot of applications use, like your web browser. So as an example of what a DNS would do, we could send it the string www.google.com, and it would return us this IP address right here. If you wanted to do this yourself, you could go to the command line and type in nslookup. So here's an example of looking up Google's web server. You can see by typing in nslookup and then the thing I'm looking for, that in this case it's actually going to give me several different servers. And of course Google being the search giant that it is, would need multiple servers. Now to reinforce this concept of a DNS, we could actually type in the IP address directly into the web browser. So when I take that IP from before and I paste it into Firefox, you can see that it takes me directly to Google. It's also important to understand that we have a client-server relationship. Now a server has a lot of information on it, and it spends most of its time waiting. A client, on the other hand, wants some data or some kind of service from a server. So generally what's going to happen is that the client's going to establish a connection with the server. The client then sends the request for the kind of information they're looking for. The server finds that information, and then it sends it back to the client. Now depending on the protocol, the client and server may disconnect at this point. So here's a visual example of what we're talking about. In this case, we have a one-shot server, meaning that the client and server are going to shut down the connection once the client receives the information that it's looking for. So in this case, the client wants a texture, and our poor server over there is just waiting for someone to connect. So the first thing that happens is the client makes a connection with the server. The client makes a request. In this case, it's looking for a sprite sheet. And on the server side, it finds that file. The server opens that file and then begins sending that data back to the client. And in this case, the client disconnects, and the server goes back to waiting. The other kind of server that we could have is a broadcast server. And this is a slightly different architecture. In the example that we have here, we have three different clients, A, B, and C, and one server. Now, architecturally, what's going on is that we have one thread per client. And we have to structure our code this way, because we're going to be sending and receiving information asynchronously. So in this case, let's say that the server is for an MMORPG or massively multiplayer online role-playing game. Here you can see that client A is sending some coordinates, at which point the server receives those coordinates and then broadcasts it out to the other clients. The main things that you should remember is that each computer is assigned a unique IP address. 
Each IP address has a series of ports that you can read and write from. We have a couple of different ways that we can structure our client-server relationship. And the nice thing is that when it comes down to programming, if you can read and write to files, you can read and write to the network. So in the up and coming tutorials, we're going to be developing a poor man's web browser and also a poor man's web server. So that's it. Let's start coding.